Hello, oh, welcome. It's Neil Dugan here, and uh, this is day seven of the um, 30 day depression challenge. And um, it's really been a very interesting journey already for me. And uh, one of the things that's really come up for me is the sort of understanding and this feeling around the fact that uh, we expect trouble to come from the outside. We expect the, the issues that are going to uh, create so much stress on us that we might end up um, suffering an anxiety attack or, or falling into um, depression. Um, they're, that they're all going to be found on the outside. Now, um, you know, once again, when I was analyzing this overnight, I'm thinking to myself, well, um, you know, one of the things that we're not talking about at all is the way in which we can uh, individually actually manufacture the appropriate sorts of triggers. So to understand how that could be and, and why it might be and you know, why on earth you'd actually choose to um, manufacture some triggers, you have to actually have a look at what's driving this whole process. So when we're talking about depression in particular, um, we're looking at the pain body. So the pain body is fed by emotions, it's fed by feelings. So all of the feelings, the strong feelings that you have, um, particularly when they're related to uh, so-called negative experiences. So you've got these so-called negative experiences going on in your life and there's a whole lot of emotions and, and some people would call those negative emotions, other people just think about them as being emotions. Now obviously there's a whole heap of positive emotions, things like love and gratitude and, and, and that type of thing which are enormously powerful emotions and they're very positive. So we're talking about the emotions which are fed um, around these types of belief systems and so on. So we know that the pain body is being fed by it. Well, guess what happens? The pain body becomes so strong and it develops almost an entity-like um, nature that it, it creates a vacuum. So the pain body itself is, is actually creating a vacuum into which there's a requirement for more and more experiences, so more and more of these feelings which are going to be attached to um, one or other of these ideas or concepts or belief systems. So. If you haven't got a handy uh, husband nearby who's um, giving you grief or children who are giving you grief or you know perhaps a, a boss that's giving you grief or a mother or a father or something like that, then what you'll do is you'll actually work out ways in which you can actually trigger these belief systems yourself. So um, it, it's easy to um, see examples of these and I'm going to give you an example um, only, only in the last 24 hours um, for myself. So. Um, I, I've been in a new relationship, and in this new relationship, um, you know, there's all kinds of stresses that go with it. So, like normal, normal stresses when people, um, you know, begin a new relationship and they're testing out each other's karma and they're trying to actually work out what suffering that they can um, sort of intersect with and all that type of thing. So that that idea of intersecting fields of suffering. Now. Um, you know, my new partner and I are trying um, exceptionally hard in a very conscious way to manage this process and to make sure that, um, you know, that we are um, being very, very careful not to deliberately in any way actually trigger one another. So you've got this kind of um, situation where you've got the potential for um, unrest and the potential for issues uh, are simmering. So the, the, this potential is simmering away there. And um, when you feel that vacuum, and so we're now talking about an example in my own case here. Um, I I've, have this um, need, um, the pain body has this need to get emotions around um, being abandoned. So I talked a little bit about my experience with um, feeling abandoned before, and whilst I've done tremendous work on it, it no longer controls me, <coughs> it's still there. And um, in, in the situation yesterday, um, in the absence of um, you know, any sense of abandonment coming um, from a partner, um, I was able to actually manufacture an idea in my mind um, that, in fact, I was actually being, um, you know, abandoned, left to my own devices and that type of thing. So I actually generated and, and manufactured um, these, these, um, this thought, which then acted as a trigger against this um, concept which Neil Dugan is going to be abandoned. So, like, that's the concept that's, um, that, that sits in there. And, you know, lo and behold, all the emotions that, um, you know, were stuck in and around abandonment um, came out to play. Now, you know, I hasten to add that I was very, very careful to um, nip this in the bud and make sure that it wasn't indulged in. But you can't, or I can't deny the fact that 
um, I was triggered just a small amount. So like there was a small amount of triggering going there and um, you know all the identifiable motions um, came out of it. So um, here we have an example of there's nobody to blame in the environment. I just can't find anybody to blame in the environment. And so what I'll do is I'll just go and manufacture um, this, this, a trigger which can trigger this belief system so that I can have the experience yet again of um, feeling as though I've been abandoned. So there you go. It's uh, entirely uh, conceivable and, and I guarantee that you're doing it every day. Um, you who are watching this video, um, you're actually generating, self-generating triggers in the absence of the environment actually delivering them up to you. So um, once again, we have the concept. So the concept is an idea, <clears throat> belief system, um, particularly powerful ones, um, or just a concept of some sort. A trigger coming in which is tuned perfectly to tweak it, so it pushes those buttons. So away we go, we push a button and we trigger um, the actual concept or whatever. Out come the emotions, they're just like a parade of emotions which are perfectly adapted to um, that trigger and they feed straight into the pain body and the pain body says yum 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 what a nice lunch and you know we feed it make it stronger and stronger and stronger so it gets to drive more requests for more of these um, fulfilling meals of wonderful emotions that actually feed it up so i hope that this is a useful example that i've given you there and um, just to reassure you that um, everyone is human and everybody is um, capable of um, you know, falling for these tricks, these tricks that the pain body will actually uh, produce for you. And um, I hope also that it will uh, show you that it's entirely possible still, even in that process. So like I, you know, I went through all of those little bits and pieces, but I was able to minimize it at each step. So I minimized the amount of emotions, I minimized the amount of mind that was involved, so all the thinking, I minimized all that amount of mind, minimized the amount of emotions, I watched the triggers, I actually learned something new about um, the particular trigger that was going on, and um, you know, I'm able to look out for it in the future. So next time one of these triggers I am generating in myself because nobody's abandoning me at the moment, then I'll be able to watch it and I'll be able to actually see it coming and I'll say, sorry, I'm not going to feed you pain body. I'm not going to feed you anymore. So I hope that's helpful and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps. Also, please share these videos with your friends. Anybody who's suffering from depression or anxiety, share the videos with them. Uh, we're going to be going through the entire process around um, anxiety and depression. We're going to look at really hard at um, how mania works in with these two as well. So look forward to seeing you on the next video, and uh, please like and share. Thank you very much. Bye.